Alrighty, I am on <clears throat> in a different venue this morning. I hope people are there. Looking for my notes. If you're there, say hello out there. Alrighty, looks like I'm up and moving. I think I got the uh, thanks for the comments and in live from my car today. <laughs> what a beautiful day it is too. It is a gorgeous day. It's been a pretty nice weekend. Hello Ann. Hey, good to see you. Hope things are going well for you. Hello Randall. Good morning to you. Beautiful day. Can you believe it's halfway through September already? I cannot believe we're through the middle of September. This whole 2020 has been a time warp for me. I hope you guys are well. Yeah. Making sure everything's up and running from the car here. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, I haven't looked at the forecast. Let me see what the forecast is for the week. Last week was really, really nice. I mean, talking about this week, obviously it was rainy last week. But uh, let me see here. If I can get on the good old weather thing. Let's see, weather forecast, St. Joseph. Let's see, ooh, nice week ahead. Oh my goodness. It's going to be a beautiful day, topping 80 degrees today for the high. Totally sunny. That's awesome. You guys have any big plans for today? Good morning, Kip. Good morning, Ann. Joyce. Lisa. Shirley. I'm finally learning how to do this thing. Hello, Kimmy. Good morning to you. This is cool. Anybody have any big plans for today? Any outdoor plans? Yeah, I, I'm. I don't know what my plans are today. I know I got to do stuff, but uh, I don't know what order I'm going to do them in. <laughs> That cool air is so refreshing. refreshing. Good morning, Doug. Good morning, Joshua, Vicky. Good to see your pictures and your words there. Hmm. How many of you all made it out to the uh, thing in the Zingo? Looks like I got somebody coming by. Looks like Chris. I'm doing. Chris is pulling up right now. Hello, Chris. You're live. <laughs> I got you on uh, Facebook right now. I'm doing the devotion. So, <laughs> hello, Chris. He's pulled up. <laughs> Chris is pulling up behind me. Hello, Christopher. <laughs> See you later, man. Uh, Chris, I'm out in the church parking lot, actually. <laughs> I picked up a charger. So, I just had a drive by, Chris Olson. So, good morning, Chris. <laughs> good morning, Cynthia. He's driving back up the lot. <laughs> that was funny. Good to see Chris. Hmm. Yeah, did, did anybody make it out to Mazingo? I uh, I was here Saturday getting ready for kids' church. That was fun yesterday seeing kids again. It's one thing to see kids on Zoom, but you can't replace the live. That's for sure. Hmm. Well, this today we're going to be talking, kind of carrying further from um, what I talked about last week with Elijah. And so we'll get that started here shortly. A lot happened in a small little chapter. Good morning, Roseanne. Just hope that things are going well for you. I'll take a couple more minutes and we'll get started. Anybody have any outdoor plans today? It'd be a good day to have outdoor plans for sure. How many are ready for fall? You guys ready for fall? I'm kind of looking forward to it, you know, I mentioned it last week, you know, that I, I think God really timed the seasons perfectly well. I mean, I love summer. I love summer, don't get me wrong. I like the sunshine, but I do enjoy the four seasons back here. Now, winter, eh, after Christmas and after some of the holidays, I'm ready for the warm weather again, but uh, I really, I, I'm looking forward to fall. Hope you all are too, because it's a coming. 
I see the trees out here at the church. I'm noticing some of the trees are starting to change color. I wonder if we'll have a real pretty fall this year where the leaves will change. Be always like driving through Cug Park and seeing the, the leaves and uh, during the fall. Mazingo was gorgeous, huh, Kimmy? Great. Got to have the windows open. Oh, that is refreshing, isn't it? I know. It seems like <laughs> with our family with allergies and stuff, we usually have about a week of windows open, and then we switch to either AC or heat. <laughs> kind of crazy. Well, that's great. You had an attic fan going and pulling in all that great air all weekend. That's great, Kimmy. Yeah, Mazingo sounds like a really good place. I've been up there before. It's been a while, but pretty nice spread up there. Hmm. Well, I do hope everyone has a great day, of course. I think I will get ready to start here. I think we got most everybody joined that's going to join. Thank you for joining this morning. And it is really good to be with you guys again. Um, let's, let's go ahead and start off in prayer today, uh, as always. I want to thank God for this beautiful day. You know, with all the things that go on in a, in a year, in a week, in a day, I'm just thankful that God's in control of it all, and we can rely on Him completely. So, let's lift up this time right off and start off right today with uh, giving it to the Lord. My dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for my friends that are on the other side of this internet right now. We thank you, Lord, for this gorgeous day. We thank you, Lord, that you are in control of all things, that we can rely on you in every situation and circumstance. We thank you for your word, Lord, and the direction it provides. We thank you that we can trust it completely, your infallible word. And, Lord, I just want to thank you personally for the compass it is in my life of giving me direction, a, a firm footing with all the things that occur every day. I can trust in your word, and we, as a church family together, as we are together right now, we can trust in your word and lean hard on it And when we go through things in life. Thank you for being our shepherd, Lord. Thank you for being the shepherd, the good shepherd that directs and watch over, that watches over the flock. And thank you for your care for us. And thank you for this beautiful nature around us, Lord. You, you created all this for us to sustain our life and to, <clears throat> to really to be able to look at in awe and recognize your handiwork in it all. So I thank you for that, God. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, uh, last week we were talking about verse Luke 137. With God, nothing shall be impossible. As I mentioned last week, these words were spoken by the angel Gabriel to Mary after foretelling the birth of Jesus and John. And, you know, in my opinion, these words were also a continuation of uh, the truth demonstrated through the lives of others uh, found in Scripture, as God has worked through them over the courses of centuries of old. Today's devotion picks up where we left off. I wanted to at least give, you know, a quick review for those that may not have participated. You know, um, last week we found Elijah, who provided the message to Ahab that there would be a drought within the land. And the drought was a, a judgment of Ahab who elevated the idolatry of Baal, who, by the way, again, was a god of fertility and, and rain. And so it was amazing how God used nature to show this judgment by creating a drought and not allowing rain to be on the land. You know, God made provision for Elijah through really the most unlikely of circumstances uh, within nature. He used ravens to provide meat two times a day and uh, water from a brook. And he, it's amazing what he did <laughs> to provide for him. And I just can imagine as Elijah seeing God's work through those things, uh, what a source of encouragement that might have been. You know, once the brook dried up, uh, God directed Elijah to travel to Zarephath so that he would pr find provision again from a widow that lived there. And the widow would place her trust in Elijah's God and, and that he would provide the necessary increase to her flour and oil supply each day so that they might be able to um, eat and survive. God's miraculous work within the widow's life demonstrated that God indeed, as I said last week, works in, he works during, and he works through the circumstances in life. And, you know, so mightily so 
that it, it often, if we take a look, if we take a, if we look through things and take a pause, it really can amaze us the way he works. Now, in reading through chapter 17, uh, we find that God is not done working in the life of the widow. Uh, the story does not end here. In fact, the story at first reading, when I was reading it, you know, again, uh, it takes really a dramatic turn, uh, a turn that appears for the worst. And, you know, uh, in situations in life, you know, when God is working, there may be things that we experience and things may get a little worse before they get better. And, and uh, but we just have to trust, you know, trust God. So, Scripture records that the miracle of God's provision to Elijah and the widow lasted uh, many days. Uh, we don't know exactly uh, the certain amount of number of days which had passed, but we do know that after such a time as it states in the Bible, that the widow's son uh, became ill and died. I'm thinking, wow, this is a hardship upon hardship for this widow. Now, you imagine the, the, the widow's life prior to her contact with Elijah. As a widow back in that time, uh, as any time really, it would be, but especially so back then, it would be undoubtedly hard for her. Even without the reality of the, the drought that came upon the land, things would be difficult at best. I mean, it would, it would be a struggle, life would be. And the introduction of Elijah into her life and God's provision would have certainly provided hope. However, I believe she still would have felt loss. And, you know, Elijah would not be with her forever. The widow would still be without her husband and her boy, really, without her father, without his father. You know, again, God, uh, I like to look at how God continually works through our lives. He, he is revealing things for people and situations, and he's continually, when we were his children, he's continually doing a work. And he knows what's best for us, and he knows what is on our hearts. In fact, it states in Psalm 44, 21, it talks about that very fact that God knows the secrets of our heart. Whatever the state of the heart the widow now had, she found herself in. Um, she was without her son that she dearly loved, and her response to this situation when her son died she was kind of condemning of herself, knowing what she had lived in life, and, and began to have negative thoughts toward Elijah, the very man that was sent uh, by God. It was so interesting in this situation. Elijah, in this situation, and her, 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 her response, if you consider it critical or whatever, he responds with faith, and a really great faith. He does not chastise her for the words that she sp spoke, uh, that she said in, in her sorrow. Elijah does something amazing, really. He, he, he asks for her son. He takes her son from her arms, it states in the Bible, and carries him to his bed and then lays him out on it. And here we see Elijah ask something of God that until this time had not been asked from in Scripture that to my knowledge. He called out passionately for the resurrection of this boy's life. Three times he would pray with great faith for restoration. This, this had not been achieved before, but he, he knew God. He knew God was capable. He knew God that was able. And so he, he, he stretched out across the sun and, and, and petitioned God for this miracle. Then we find in Scripture, you know, God provides that exact miracle hoped for and believed for by Elijah. This was indeed a miracle of miracles. Elijah would, would bring the son to the widow and share the great news, saying, Look, your son is alive. Can you imagine what this widow had experienced to see that her very son that she held in her arms was now resurrected, really, from the dead. This topped 
anything in her life, I guarantee anything. This restored hope to her. Her her husband had passed. She had been, you know, scraping sticks and putting things together for one last meal to die. She had she had received provision from God, but then this tragic loss. Her son was provided back to her. What a miracle. She she was now witness to not only God's provision, but now God's restoration. This this act changed whatever it was in her heart. Whatever whatever needed change, this this I believe was the final thing to, to change her. It 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 produced great faith that changed her her view of God forever. She now embraced the truth of God within her. The account, you know, talked about in 1 Kings 17, again demonstrate a, a God that cares for our every need. And and again, with this kind of two-part thing, I, I just, I really want to stress the idea that God works in, He He works during, and He works through, the circumstances and trials in life. You know, Elijah's faith and obedience helped grow the faith of the widow. And I, I think, you know, as a church, as a church, as a body of believers, and even like a church in our size, there's there's times when people are struggling. And there's times, where, as I mentioned last week, there's times in which we are on the mountaintops of life, and we came out of a trial, there are times in which we were heading toward it, and there's times in which we are in the midst and in the valley. And what a privilege it is every time that if we are able to walk along our brother and sister in Christ when they're going through those trials. You know, when our faith is strong, what a blessing it is for having opportunities either by our words or by our actions, that we can strengthen our brother and sister. You know, we each will face trials in life. It, it is a given. But God works in, He works during, and He works through those trials. We can take hope. And even the things that, the way these things work out, you know, God works in mysterious and marvelous ways. His ways are not our ways, as it says in the Bible, and I thank God for that. But in the way he works, we just trust. We trust in his handiwork. And if we as a church body can walk along and be the hands and feet of God when people are going through trials, and when they need strengthening in their faith, that's, I believe, what God is, wants us to do, obviously. And I, I think what a privilege it is. So I encourage you today, if you are going through a trial, we are here for you, the church. You know, we are your brothers and sisters that walk alongside you in Christ. I encourage you as well, if you know others that are going through a trial, are going through, may, you're, may you take those steps out of maybe your comfort zone to provide that comfort with your faith and your strength. May that be shared with them so that might give them strength. And so, uh, I guess that's probably it. I, I could talk and talk. <laughs> but I just encourage you, you know, we are given a unique privilege when we are the sons and daughters of Christ, when we have been grafted into the vine, we have been given great opportunity. And so I just pray that this week, this very day, we're not given tomorrow, but I pray that this very day, that we will look for opportunities to be a source of encouragement and strength for those that need it. Well, let's pray. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for taking time. I pray that your day is blessed. So let's, let's pray. Dear Father God, I certainly thank you. I thank you for who you are. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You've always been. You know the, the beginning from the end. You know how everything plays out. 
And so, God, when things are gray or, or things that we can't, you know, fuzzy, we can't see clearly, we can trust in you. We can take heart in knowing that you indeed have it covered. And so when things don't make sense, when things might be stressful, we can just cast our cares upon you. We thank you that we can do so. We thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord, who made a way that we might have this unique and direct relationship with you, a restored relationship with you, that we might come to you and help us to be mindful to give you praise. Help us to be mindful to see your hand at work, that you would give us really spiritual eyes to see your work. And Lord, I pray for those that may be with us today or may hear this later on uh, when they watch it. Lord, if they're going through trials, we pray for your peace and certainly your presence, Lord. That your presence would be among, among those that are going through hardship. Lord, we pray for your word that it would give freedom and liberation from the worries and anxieties that people might feel. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for your church. We thank you for the privilege of being your ambassador, being your ambassador to people. We pray that, Lord, that we might bring you honor and glory through our words and actions. We love you and we give you praise. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining. Remember, as I always say, God bless and go bless. May you have a great day. And we're looking forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. I'll see if I can learn how to end the video. God bless.